I feel sorta of like people are sleeping on this bundle. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton. I'm your humble narrator and welcome back to another bundle banter. Today we've got Fanatical. God, they've got so many bundles. <laughs> I'm gonna cover them as fast as possible. But this is the Indie Gems bundle that we're looking at today. It's $2.50, which is an exceptionally low price for 8 games. Jesus. 30 cents per game? I'll snap up that deal. No problem. <laughs> but I do already have most of these games. Anyways, let's go ahead, take a look at the games that are in the bundle. We've got Opus, The Day We Found Earth, Try of Friendship and Madness, Brawl Out, Dead Age, Beholder, Distrust, Polar Survival, Donuts and Justice, and Crimson Land. I do recognize most of these games indeed. As far as them being indie gems, I think some are far more deserving of the title than others, but a lot of that does come down to personal taste. So let's go ahead and jump into these games and talk about each of them individually. Opus, The Day We Found Earth. You guys remember Wally? -E? It's like this movie about a little robot on an abandoned planet. Well, at least the good part of the movie is. Well, Opus is like if Wally -E had a telescope welded to his face. Okay, enough with the dumb comparisons. Opus is a small story about a robot looking towards the stars in order to save humanity. The story is really short, but to me it feels like it doesn't overstay its welcome. When it was over, I didn't exactly thirst for more, maybe because it wasn't a game that particularly grabbed me, but more likely because the developers just knew when to stop. Not every game needs a thousand hours worth of content. All that's required is that a good story is told with some fun gameplay to enhance that story. Opus does exactly that. No more, and no less. The characters are pretty likable. The story is fantastic. The puzzles and gameplay are simple, while still being challenging enough to not put me to sleep. And while the art style isn't particularly mind-blowing, at least in my view, it does a great job at staying original and conveying everything that you need to know. If you're into stargazing, then this game was custom-built for you. It isn't exactly the most amazing game you'll ever play, but it is a likable adventure. Try A Friendship and Madness I was about to call Opus an indie gem, but then I remembered that Try was coming next. And if I was forced to pick a single gem out of this bundle, then this would unequivocally be the one. The art direction is just stunning. The mechanics used to solve puzzles are the kinds of things that I dream about. You could bend light, generate platforms out of thin air, and of course, fucking teleport. A lot of the puzzles are kind of on the easier side to solve because of the degree of freedom that is offered by this game, but you won't hear any complaints from me. If you're looking to bulk out the playtime, then you can simply go hunting for collectibles. Some of them are extremely difficult to find. While the game isn't portal levels of awesome, it's not really a fair comparison because almost nothing matches up to portal. The story is passable, and I really enjoy the two characters. The music gives off a really soothing vibe that can help you keep your cool, even during those puzzles that make you want to smash your keyboard into a billion pieces. And it probably will happen. I really have no idea why this game didn't absolutely catch fire. I took a peek at this game right around the time it came out, and I loved it, head over heels. My tastes might have changed slightly over time, but Try still fits right in. Any game that sticks with me for half a decade is certainly worth its salt. Even if it didn't take off like it deserves to, Try will always be a game that I can recommend to anyone that likes physics-based puzzling, without hesitation. You finished Portal 1 and 2, you need something else to sate your appetite? Try out Try. Brawl Out. Is it a knockoff Super Smash Bros? Well, yeah, but it's still pretty decent. The real failing here is that there are only 10 characters to choose from. Six original characters and four guest characters. The guest characters are from Guacamelee, Hyperlight Drifter, Ukulele, and Dead Cells. All decent franchises, especially Dead Cells, extra decent. <laughs> but, you know, with such a small roster, it's really hard to recommend this game as your go-to Smash Bros. light experience. If I'm stuck without Smash, I probably would just re-download Brawlhalla before ever booting up Brawl Out. It isn't a complete travesty, but... It feels like this game was just destined for failure. The combat is tight and responsive. The graphics look really cool. Hyper Light Drifter looks especially awesome. I love seeing 2D characters with another dimension added. Well, half a dimension at least. 2.5D characters. 
is more accurate. The developers are actively improving the game, and the community is extremely friendly and welcoming, but the player base just isn't there. Even the max level AI is easy enough to overcome after just a little bit of practice, and if you're looking for players in the Discord server, people might not always be available for a real match. I love rooting for the underdog, but placing any bets on Brawlout would be pretty ill-advised. Other games have done the exact same thing much better. Brawlout might surprise me and end up catching up to its competitors, but that is such a long shot. Super Smash Bros., of course, the reigning champ. Brawlhalla is free to play, so if you can't afford Super Smash Bros., okay, you can get some action out of that. Brawlout is just kind of in this weird middle ground. But if you could pick it up for 30 cents, I suppose it's worth kicking around just a little bit. Dead Age. Turn-based zombie survival game. Yeah, this is in my wheelhouse. I actually have a full review for this one somewhere in my channel. Now where did I put... Oh, would you look at that? It's one of my most viewed videos. Well, it seems like this game got the attention that it deserved, so I can rest a bit easier with that fact in mind. Don't get me wrong, this game is far from perfect. The models are uglier than shit, and combat is nowhere near as fun as it could be, but I got really hooked in by the base and resource management. I've heard it compared to a JRPG, which might just be the secret sauce to holding my interest. The skills don't feel very significant, I didn't get very attached to any of the characters, but I kept grinding, just for the sake of the grind. You'll die plenty, but you might get a little bit further on your next playthrough. It's not the type of carrot on a stick that everyone will go for, but I'm a self-admitted sucker for it. Combining roguelite, zombies, resource management, and turn-based combat? Whew. It's a very specific flavor, but it feels like it was made with my specific palette in mind. I can accept that not everyone will be into it, but I am a big fan, and I'm glad the game did well enough to warrant a Dead Age 2. I shall be waiting with bated breath. Beholder, Terrible Landlord Simulator. You spy on your tenants, not just for fun, but to do your duty for the good of the state, comrade. It gives off some papers please kind of vibe with the narrative, but thank goodness it is nowhere near as linear. You'll deal with tenants as you see fit. You can let things slide or blackmail people for desperately needed cash, or you can actually do your job and send them off to the gulag, never to be seen again. The moral quandaries that are presented by Beholder are the biggest reason that I could not stop myself from playing. Should I break into that nice old lady's apartment and steal her things so I can afford medicine for my sick daughter? Should I turn my wife in because I caught her reading, which is against the law according to the state? I mean, I haven't turned anyone in for a while, so if I don't, I might end up in the gulag myself. Sorry, wifey. I gotta look out for number one. And off to the gulag she goes. <laughs> I always enjoy games with a dystopian narrative, but in most games, you're rebelling against it. Beholder is unique because it makes you a cog in Big Brother's machine. I think it's an interesting take that makes you question your own morals and see what lines you'll cross and what you're actually capable of looking past when your ass is really on the line. Distrust, Polar Survival. Did you like John Carpenter's movie The Thing? Well that's great. It's a really good movie. Too bad this game is nothing like that movie, aside from the setting. People keep drawing this dumbass comparison, and I went into Distrust expecting a Mafia-style game about trying to determine who the monster was. Instead, what I got was a survival crafting title. Once I shifted my mindset, I started to really enjoy the experience, though. Keep your belly full and keep warm while being assaulted by a variety of different monsters. Each monster has a specific weakness. And if that weren't interesting enough, there are 15 characters, all with different attributes. I really like that each base you arrive at is randomly generated, so you never know quite what to expect. The atmosphere is great and managed to keep me on edge as I scrambled around gathering whatever I thought would help me not die. How do you think that turned out? Yeah, I died horribly. But I did learn, and the next playthrough was just a little bit better. Playing solo is alright, but things really open up if you're in a co-op game and there are actually people playing this online still. There are times that you'll be forced into an unavoidable position that inevitably leads to your death, but that's just sort of a given when it comes to procedural generation. Overall, I did enjoy my time with Distrust. Really, the only negative I could find is that it's a little clunky. 
but this is one of those few games that is strangely improved by a small amount of jank. Oh, Donuts Injustice, why is this in the Indie Gems bundle, can somebody tell me? I'm gonna start off by saying that I really enjoy lo-fi style games. Great pixel art can absolutely take my breath away. This game does a decent job with its pixel art. Nothing really mind-blowing, but it gets a solid pass. It's enough for me to give the game a chance, at the very least. And that, that was my first mistake. The gameplay here is simpler than Forrest Gump, and more shallow than a puddle of ant piss. You can shoot left, you can shoot right, you can throw grenades. Okay. <laughs> there are different weapons, but a lot of them feel like more of a curse than a boon. The boss fights are so uninspired that it is almost insulting. You can beat almost every single boss by just standing adjacent to them and mashing the fire button. It is shockingly bad. The whole game is pretty uninspired now that I think about it. Hey, people like the 80s, right? Oh, and buddy cop movies are pretty popular. Let's make an 80s buddy cop game that doesn't offer any commentary of the genre. Great idea, that'll reel them in. Oh yeah, players also like collecting coins, so we should probably add, like, money? But why would we need money? Lives aren't really an issue, and there are no shops. Well, why don't we just put it in a shop? Players can buy, uh, hats. Oh yeah, people fucking love hats. It's the sort of joke that was played out years before this game was released. Ugh. It feels like the entire experience was developed by an out-of-touch and particularly dull AI marketing bot. Not an indie gem, definitely the worst game in the bundle. It makes me sick. Crimson Land. Full disclosure, this channel works pretty closely with 10 Tons Limited, but that doesn't mean that I'm gonna pull any punches. I'll be honest with you with this one. Even though I know I've played Crimson Land before, I did need to boot it up again to remind myself of what it was like. That doesn't bode well for a game, but after an hour or so of playing, I can see why it didn't leave much of an impression. It's a top-down twin-stick shooter, it's what Ten Tenths Limited is best at, and this game allows you to decimate hordes of enemies with a wide variety of different weapons. Mechanically, it's solid and really fun to play, but it doesn't feel like it does much at all to innovate or push the genre forward. That's fine, not every game needs to be a life-changing experience. It does its job and it does it well, and that's all I can really ask for. There are 55 perks and 30 weapons to choose from, so you've got a fairly high degree of customization. There are also 5 different game modes, which does wonders for extending the life of the game, even though basically all you do is stand there and kill stuff. I think Crimson Land does drop the ball in a few areas, the most grievous of which would be the level design. Some of the arenas you're fighting in are basically barren, which is just so boring. With these giant empty arenas, the enemies can't spawn at the edge of the screen, you'd have too much time to kill them, so let's just spawn them right on top of the player for an insta-death, right? Ugh, why? Crimson Land is a passable game. But yeah, there's no doubt in my mind as to why I promptly forgot about playing this one. So, what do I think of the bundle as a whole? I think it is a freaking killer deal. <laughs> Donuts and Justice is really the only game that I don't like. Crimson Land and Brawl Out are pretty meh as well, but Opus, really really nice narrative storytelling. Try, physics-based platformer, create your own platforms, it's amazing. Dead Age is just awesome resource management, zombie survival. Beholder, who doesn't want to be the worst landlord in the world? Distrust, surprisingly is a good one, but I don't know why people keep making comparisons to the thing. What, what the hell? <laughs> I guess it's just to move some more copies. But yeah, for 30 cents, you are going to get your money's worth, I absolutely guarantee it. For a price point of only $2.50, this is a pretty amazing collection of games. I feel sorta of like people are sleeping on this bundle, maybe because it got shoved out during Bundle Fest with like a hundred other bundles, but it might even be better than the Kingslayer bundle that they started with, especially factoring in the price. Are these all indie gems? I mean, I can think of indie gems that have gotten a lot more attention than most of these games, but overall, most of them are definitely deserving of some praise. So yeah, what did you guys think of the bundle? Did you pick it up? Did you give it a pass? If you picked it up, did you use my link that is in the description and also the pinned comment? Because I would really appreciate that. I would also appreciate if you like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the episode. 
We've also got links in the description, not just my fanatical affiliate link, but also Twitter, where I'm shitposting all the time, Discord, which is growing nicely, and Patreon, which I could not thank my generous patrons enough. So thank you so very much to Lady Nyx, Nico the Legend, Crimson Albedo, Radimus Sisko, and Damon Darkstar. Thank you guys, as always, for listening and basically helping my dream to become a reality. This channel's growing faster than it ever has in the entire span of the channel, so we're going to continue with this bundle content. I'd also like to throw some gameplay back in there, but I gotta slog through these bundles first. And I'm also doing Reddit content over on Red X, if you just can't get enough of my voice. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, it, that's probably not going to happen. But anyways, friends, thank you as always. This has been Bundle Banter. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I shall see you in the next one. And until then, friends, bye-bye.